In a previous video, we used FluentD log aggregator to parse Nginx access log and convert each event from the file to Prometheus metrics. From the log, you can extract the request duration of each request and calculate different percentiles. For example, P99, P90 and P50. Also, you can find the number of requests per second in the second traffic graph. And availability, which is a ratio between failed and successful requests. You can also use variables to switch between different different routes, status codes and HTTP methods. To scrape and convert Nginx basic stats, we used open source Prometheus exporter, for example, to get active connections. In this video, we'll replace both of those projects with a custom built Prometheus exporter. In my opinion, it's a more reliable and simpler approach than maintaining both of those projects at the same time. First of all, we'll use the native Nginx stab status module to export statistics about the Nginx, such as active connections. I like this tutorial because it uses two completely different approaches how to build a custom Prometheus exporter. In the first case, when we simply need to scrape and convert native Nginx metrics, we'll create a custom collector and register it with Prometheus. This approach you can use when you don't need to maintain any state, such as counter. You simply scrape and expose whatever you have. This approach can be used to convert graphite metrics to Prometheus metrics as an example. For the second approach, we'll parse the Nginx access log. In that case, we'll use the same approach as you would use to instrument any other Golang application. We'll tail the log and convert each entry to Prometheus metrics as they come. Both of these approaches can be implemented independently. First, let's create a folder for Prometheus exporter and switch directories. Before we can start developing our exporter, we need to initialize the Go module. I'll point it to my GitHub repository. Also, let's follow the same folder structure as most open source projects, including Kubernetes. Create CMD and exporter subfolders. We'll put the entry point file there. Now, let's create the main.go file. Since it's an entry point, we need to start with a package main and the main function. Let's make our exporter more or less flexible. We'll use multiple arguments to configure what port and path to scrape, as well as location of the access log. As a default, let's expose our converted Prometheus metrics on port 9150. Then we need to call flag parse to get the values. Then create a new Prometheus registry. Since it's an external package, we need to run go mod tidy to download it. Prometheus has a few built-in collectors that you can use to get some system metrics. For example, you can register go collector with Prometheus if you want to get metrics from the go link itself such as number of go routines. Next, let's use the standard HTTP module to create a multiplexer. Then create a Prometheus handler using prom HTTP module. The first argument is a registry and the second one is options. Now we can register Prometheus handler on the slash metrics path. That's all configuration for the Prometheus HTTP handler. Now we need to start HTTP server. Let's get the port from the command line argument. Then print starting Nginx exporter to the console. Finally, let's use listen and serve function to start the server and handle the error. Let's go ahead and try to run our exporter for the first time. Metrics are exposed on port 9150 slash metrics. We can use curl to hit that endpoint. Here we have all the metrics that the default Go collector provides. Sometimes you don't want to expose them, especially for development. Let's temporarily disable them. Remove the Go collector from line 21. Let's restart the exporter and hit the same slash metrics endpoint. This time we didn't get any metrics, which is expected result. The next step is to run Nginx locally. The easiest and most portable way is to use docker and docker compose file. First, you need to define the schema. Version 3 is the last one. Then under services, create Nginx. You can build image using docker compose or simply specify the image that you want to use for the Nginx service. I'll use the latest stable version 
version, the same one I used in the previous video. Then instead of using port 80, let me map the 80 port on the Nginx container to the 8181 port on my laptop. In that way, we can avoid port conflicts if you run anything already on port 80. To start the docker, just run docker compose up. Dash D flag is used to run containers in the background. Then on the localhost 8181, you can find Nginx server, which should give you the welcome page. Now let's create a folder for Nginx where we'll put some configuration files. First of all, we want to create a server block to expose stub status page. Typically, you would run your custom Prometheus exporter on the same machine where you run Nginx. In that way, you can expose this page only to the local host. Due to the nature of containers and Docker Compose, we want to expose it on all network interfaces. Let's also use slash status path to provide stats. We need to make some changes in the Docker Compose file. First, we must expose the status port 8080 to the local host. Second, we want to mount this configuration file we just created with the status page to the Nginx container. You can use volumes key for that. To update Nginx container, you can simply run docker compose app again. Now, if you try to access the status page on port 8080, you'll get the basic metrics exposed by the open source Nginx server. That's why to get upstream service specific metrics, such as duration, status codes and requests, we need to parse access log. To make exporter more flexible, let's add a few variables that you can set using command line arguments. The first one is target host. The default of course is local host. The second is the port for the basic stats. In my case, I set it to 8080. And the final one is for the path. We used slash status to expose stats. As I mentioned before, we'll use two different approaches. This is the beginning of the first approach when we create a custom Prometheus collector and convert Nginx specific metrics to Prometheus without keeping a state for variables such as counters. The way it's going to work is we'll create a function that will be used every time we scrape our custom exporter. For example, every 15 seconds, which is the default Prometheus scrape interval. When Prometheus scrape our exporter, it will scrape the Nginx status page. Let's construct the URL that our exporter will scrape. Take the target host, port and path. Now let's define the function to scrape Nginx. It will return the Nginx stats that we define later and optionally error. Create a standard net client to invoke the Nginx page URL. Then send a get request with the URL. Handle the error and close it when the request is completed. Read the body of the response with the Nginx basic stats and create the slice of bytes from the body. Finally, use another scan basic stat function to parse the status page and convert those metrics to Prometheus format. Now let's create exporter package and define nginx stats and scan method. Create a golang struct for nginx metrics. The first metric we want to convert is active connections from the status page. I use float64 just because when constructing Prometheus metric, it will require that data type. Next is the scan function to parse and convert metrics. Let's create a new scanner with the slice of bytes we passed from the URL request. Then declare the stats variable of the type slice of nginx stats. Create the fields variable that represents each line on the status page. You'll see it in a minute. And print it to the console. Handle the error for the scanner. Finally, return stats and optionally error. Later in this tutorial, we'll use this block to parse stats from the status page. For now, let's save it and return to the main.go file. Here, we need to import our package. We have the last error, unused variable. But before we can use it, we need to create another file. Let's call it basiccollector.go. In this file, we'll take metrics we parsed in the scan method and convert them to Prometheus metrics. Create a new struct basic collector. Here we'll define Prometheus metric. First is active connections of type Prometheus descriptor. Essentially, it's a metadata of a particular metric. And we need to declare another property, which is a function that will return Nginx metrics. In the new basic collector function, we need to define Prometheus metrics. The first one is connections active. Nginx connections active is the name of the metric. Number of active connections is a Prometheus metric help string. Then we have a slice of labels. The first metric will not get any labels. 
So let's make it empty. And the last argument is constant labels, which we also don't specify here for this metric. Since we create a custom Prometheus collector, we need to conform to its interface and declare a couple of methods. The first one is describe. For now, we have a single metric. Later, we'll add more. The last function that we need to implement is a collect. It also takes the channel of metrics in this case and not descriptors. Declare the stats and push all the metrics to the channel one by one. The first metric is active connections. Then we define the metric type. Since active connections can go up and down, the perfect type is gauge. If the metric only goes up, you would declare it as a counter. The last argument is the value of the metric. For example, right now we have a single active connection. Let's go back to the main.go file and register the custom collector that we just created in exactly the same way as we previously did for the go collector. First, create a new collector and use the function that we created to be invoked on each scrape and parse the status page as an argument. Then use must register method and pass our collector. Let's go back to the terminal and restart the exporter. This time, when you invoke the metrics endpoint, exporter will print out the fields that we have in scan method. Each field is a slice of strings. For example, active is an element at index 0, then connections element at index 1 and metric at index 2. The same applies to other lines. By now, you should understand how to parse each line and convert it to Prometheus metrics. Now, let's do a couple of metrics. In the basic.go, declare another nginx stats variable that we use in the loop to populate with metrics and then append it to the slice of metrics. Let's try to hardcode some random number of active connections. For example, set it to 12. Then use the append method and add this metric to the stats. Again, restart the exporter and try to hit the metrics endpoint. Finally, we got our first converted metric, even with a hardcoded value. You have a metric name, description, and a gauge type. Now, instead of hardcoding it, let's actually parse the status page. Remove the hardcoded value and print statement. That's how you'll do it for the each line. You need to use some conditions. For example, we know that the active connections line consists of three elements, active, connections with the semicolon, and the third one is value, which is one right now. The second condition is that the line starts with active string. Now we identify the line that we want to parse. Next, let's actually convert that value to float64. Handle the error. And instead of setting to hardcoded value of 12, use the variable that we just parsed. That's it. Restart the exporter and hit the metrics endpoint to test metrics. This time we have one single active connection on the Nginx server. This is the simplest conversion without adding any extra labels. In the following example, let me show you how to use Prometheus labels. This metric will represent the requests with different states, such as reading, writing, and waiting. This time, it's not going to be a simple float64. It's going to be a custom type that we need to declare. Let's call it connections. The first property is a type that represents the state of the connection, such as reading. The second argument is actually a value that is the same float64. In the scan method, declare a new variable of type slice of connections. We have to use slice because each combination of label and value represents a metric. Let's use a simpler condition, just compare the first string. We're not going to parse the metrics, you can implement it yourself. I'll just show you the logic. Let's create a connection variable with the reading state, then with the writing state, and finally with the waiting state. Then append all those connections to the slice of connections. Set the connections property to the slice of connections. It should be straightforward. Now we need to declare Prometheus metric in the collector. Let's create a new Prometheus descriptor for the connections metric. In the new basic collector, declare connections and set all its properties. For the metric name, we use nginx connections total. Since we'll use a counter type, we need to append the total suffix to the end just to follow Prometheus best practices. Then give it a metric description and in this case we have a single type label. Now in the collect method we need to push all those metrics. Since we have multiple values due to the combinations of labels and values, 
we need to iterate over all of them. Optionally, create a struct and then push the metrics to the channel. The first argument is a description of the Prometheus metric, such as name and help message, then the type. Since the number of requests can only go up, we use counter type, then the value of the metric and the label that the value is associated with. I think that was the most complex part of building the exporter to dealing with multiple labels. The rest of the exporter should be simpler. Let's restart it and try to access the metrics endpoint again. Now we have the Nginx connections total metric with multiple labels and corresponding values. That's pretty much all for the first part when we simply convert existing metrics to Prometheus form. This approach can also be used, for example, to scrape the proc file to get the CPU and memory usage of the node. Or maybe you can use this approach to convert graphite or any other metrics to Prometheus native format. The next approach we'll use to scrape access log is pretty much the same as you would instrument any other Golang application. Instead of instrumenting functions and HTTP handlers, we will parse the log and convert each entry to Prometheus metric. Alright, let's start. First create access.log file with even samples. It's not going to be a standard log format. We add request duration at the end of the event. You can find the nginx config with the log format under nginx folder. First is the remote address where the connection was initiated, then user if available, local time of the request, then the request itself, including HTTP verb such as post, HTTP status code of the request, the size in bytes of the response that was sent to the client, user agent and the last one if available, the duration of the request from the upstream server. There are multiple built-in variables you can use to measure a request. I usually use upstream response time. Before writing any code, we need to come up with a regular expression to parse the access log. I'll use the one I used in the previous video. Let's test it again. You can use one of many regular expression on line editors. Paste the log and the expression. You can find it in the code later. Now we have multiple named capture groups, method, path, status code, we'll use them to construct Prometheus metrics. We can also use rejects capture groups in Golang. Let's declare the expression, then declare the metric struct. The first one is the size of the response in bytes. The second one is for request duration of the type histogram. You can find two types for each metric, regular ones such as counter and counter vector or in this case histogram vector. The difference is vector metrics can have Prometheus labels. Then for the number of requests, let's also use vector since we'll have multiple labels, for example, for path, status code and HTTP verb. The same labels apply to request duration. Create a new metrics function to initialize Prometheus metrics. The first one is size bytes total. The namespace is just a prefix in the metric name. When we created a collector, we had to put this namespace in the metric name itself. You can do it here as well if you want. The description of the metric, the second one is for total request. Here we have multiple labels as I mentioned before. And the final one for the request duration. You can use either histogram or a summary. But the biggest downside of the summary is that you cannot aggregate metrics between multiple instances. Now for the histogram we need to define time interval bucket. Since it's a Nginx and we can use our own applications as upstream services, it's almost impossible to suit all the use cases. The best approach here would be to use default histogram buckets. Then we need to register all of them using the same method as we registered collector. Let's add additional flag to specify the path to the access log file. Right below the Prometheus registry, create a metrics variable. Now the way it will work is we'll tail the log file in the goroutine using third-party Golang module. Pass the metric pointer and the path to the log file. Next we need to declare tail access log file function. It takes the path as an argument and configuration. Check for the error. Then in the loop we get access to only new lines in the log file. Let's apply rejects expression to each line. Create a new result variable that will contain the name of the rejects capture group and parsed value. In the for loop let's populate that result variable and then we can create metrics. First of all let's parse the response size and convert it to float64. Here I have to warn you, you need to properly handle all the errors. To record it as a Prometheus metric use the metric struct and corresponding metric, in this case size. 
it has add function since it's a counter. The second Prometheus metric is requests. Here we have multiple labels such as method, status code and path. We also use add method but simply increment the counter by one because each line in the log file represents an HTTP request. And finally let's parse the request duration and convert it to float64 number. I'll use continue just because not all log events have request duration such as status page because it's a built-in module and not upstream service. Using the same labels, let's record this duration as well with observe function. If you would use gauge type for some of the metrics, use the set method instead. That's all for the second approach. Let's go ahead and test the final implementation. But before, we need to download the tail module. Now, if you simply restart it, you'll see a message that the exporter is waiting for the access log file. Since we tested locally, we need to update the path using the target.log file flag. If you hit the metrics endpoint for the last time, you'll see all the metrics we just defined, including the ones from the Nginx status page. If you want to reproduce the demo that you saw at the beginning of the video, you need to create an empty test access log file first. You can find all the Grafana dashboards under Grafana folder. And you need to update the docker compose file to include Prometheus and Grafana services. If you like content and you want to get up to date source code for each video I create, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.